Hey there everyone. In today's video, I'm gonna talk about how to negotiate. Even if you are a complete beginner and have never negotiated for anything before in your life, or if you've had plenty of years of practicing negotiating skills through various techniques, you will still learn something from this video. By the end of this video, you'll be able to negotiate for the salary, car, home, or whatever it is that you want that you deserve. So without any further ado, let's get into this video. So my inspiration for making this video comes from reading the book, Getting to Yes. Getting to Yes is a book about negotiation practices that all the information within it was compiled by a couple authors that worked on a Harvard project that helped develop the best techniques possible for negotiating. The reason I decided to pick up this best-selling book is because I am currently in college, I'm a senior, and I'm gonna be entering the job market. And I know that when I enter the job market, I'm gonna to have to apply for many interviews and try to get the best job possible at the best salary that I believe that I deserve. And the only way you can get that is through negotiating properly. So I did plenty of research on this and this is the book that kept coming up. Everyone kept talking about getting to yes, whether it be researchers I saw, professors, and especially fellow YouTubers. So with all of those recommendations taken into account, I decided to read this book and I realized that it was a amazing book. And despite it only being less than 200 pages, I learned so much from this book and I couldn't wait to share it with you guys. The book talks about two different types of negotiation tactics that people use. The first is positional bargaining in negotiating. And what this is, is what you would normally think of. In a typical bartering situation, such as purchasing a used vehicle from a dealership, you think of someone setting out too high of a price from the salesperson, and then you setting out a low price, and you guys arguing back and forth, trying to meet at the middle, criticizing each other's positions, and why you are right. This doesn't work out great, as it can waste time, because it's very inefficient, wasting time going back and forth, and it can ruin relationships between the customer and the seller in this case, which is not good for either side. The salesperson wants someone to keep coming back and purchasing cars from them and leaving good recommendations. And the person buying the car in this example, they want somewhere where they can go and know that they're gonna get a fair price and not have to waste all day in the dealership, which if you've ever done before, sucks. By not backing down from your position, this leads to stalemates, which leads to negotiations ceasing and just completely never coming to fruition and a bunch of wasted time, as we said before. Is there a better technique? And the book says, yes, there is. And that's what the technique that they came up with, which is principle negotiation. Principle negotiation takes four different facts into account. And that is to separate the person from the problem, focus on interest, not positions, search for options for mutual gain from both parties, and lastly, to use objective criteria that each side can agree on. And right now, we're gonna go into more detail into each of those points. The first point of principle negotiation is to separate people from the problem. So working on a problem and negotiating with someone that you already know is the best case scenario. But of course, this isn't always the case. So the main thing to keep in account is that the other person that you're negotiating with is another person. They have emotions and feelings just like you and want to be treated like a person. So attacking them personally is not going to get you anywhere. This is just going to make finding a solution to the problem impossible. Just know that people want to be heard, respected, and feel like they're putting input into the negotiation process as they do with anything. So make sure not to manhandle the negotiations and work with them, not against them. This way you guys can solve that mutual problem that you guys have. People are often fearful of what they don't know. So when you go into negotiations with someone, you might fear that their intentions are the worst. This is something people do with all kinds of instances. For example, have you ever had someone leave your house and then not call you when they get home and be worried, what happened? Did they get in a car accident? Odds are no, odds are they're perfectly fine and they just forgot to call you. But your mind races to the worst judgment possible. And this is the same in negotiations. So just remember, communication's important and make sure you talk to the other side and be thoughtful and think of them first as a person. And that the problem that you're having, no matter how horrible it is, it may not be their fault. And even if it is, don't treat it as such or else they're just gonna get defensive and dig into their own position and refuse to budge, making negotiations 
useless and not capable of working. The next ideal of principal negotiations is to focus on the interest, not the positions. So what this is asking is why does someone want a certain position that they're looking for? For example, in our example with the car and the salesman, why does that guy want to sell the car for X amount of dollars? Maybe there's some outside influences there. Maybe he's new to the job and wants to impress his boss by selling the car for a lot. Maybe there's some other kind of pressure. Maybe he hasn't sold that many cars and needs to make a big sale or else he's not going to make much this month. Why does the person who's wanting the car at a cheaper price want it at a cheaper price? Maybe they're in a financial situation as well. Maybe they feel like that's the fair market value of the car. The problem is we just look at the numbers that they want, but there's other ways to get to solving the problem of having the car purchase, which both sides want. Maybe that could be offering free oil changes. Maybe that could be setting up a financing plan instead of just purchasing cash. There's many ways that this situation can be solved that you wouldn't even think of. The point is to figure out what the other side's interests are, not their position. And sometimes this involves thinking creatively and outside the box, which most people don't think of as they just sit in their positions that they come up with during negotiations and refuse to budge or move that much. It's important to keep in mind how you would like the negotiations to unfold once you start, but you need to be open to different considerations and how they can change throughout. You want to be hard on the problem, but not on the person. So keep that in mind. A good thing to do when you're in a negotiation like this is you might want to have a pen and paper or your phone out if that's reasonable in the situation and make a list of what you think their interests are and maybe even come out and ask them what their interests are. They may be willing to tell you depending on the situation and that may help you guys solve the problem because remember, both of you guys want to solve the problem. He wants to sell a car and you need a car to buy. So it's in your guys' mutual interest for you guys to come to a conclusion. The next method of principal negotiations is to invent options for mutual gain. Remember, you guys are wanting to come to an agreement, so both sides need to appeal to whatever solution you come up with. So it's important to be creative, as we said, and come up with various different ideas, some of which you may not use to try to come up with ways that both sides would enjoy having a negotiation come to fruition. One of the best ways to do this is through brainstorming and making sure your brainstorming session with the other side is in good faith. Through brainstorming, you'll be able to come up with various different ideas with them involved. So as we said before, when you're coming up with a solution, you want them to feel as if they're involved with it, that they helped come up with it, instead of you just trying to jam it down their throat and tell them this is a good deal. Nobody wants that. So when you work together, it feels like you're part of it and you're more willing to accept it. So this is important throughout the brainstorming session as you come up with various ideas, many of which won't even happen and you won't even end up using. But just building that sense of camaraderie with the other side is a great thing just to build that relationship throughout negotiations. Because remember, when you're negotiating with someone you're more familiar with, that you're friendly with, things can go a lot more smoothly, you're a lot more trusting of the other side, and you're more likely to get the deal that you're looking for. One of the best ways to kind of figure out what the other side's gonna want in the deal is to put yourself in their shoes. Think as if you were them. What would they want? What, what would help them out, make them uh, more enticed to whatever deal you put together? By coming out with multiple different deals that they could potentially choose from, you can kind of see what the similarities between all of them are and what are the things they're most willing to give up and the things that they're most willing to want to keep and that they really want to focus on. Now, the other three parts of the method are very important. However, the one that I think is most important is this last one, and that is insisting on using objective criteria. This would be your data or facts that you gather, and a lot of times you'll want to gather these before negotiations even begin just to have on hand because it doesn't hurt to have some kind of information and basis for what you want before you go into negotiations. So with the example of buying a car, an example of an objective criteria you might want to use is the Kelly Blue Book value of a car. Uh, if you don't know what that is, a Kelly Blue Book value finds the value of what your car is most likely worth. From working off that, you guys can come to a more reasonable deal by saying, hey, you wanted me to buy this car for 10000 However, I'm seeing the Kelly Blue Book value is around 8000 
So based off that value, you can kind of come to more of a narrow conclusion for how much you want the price to be that is reasonable. And they can't object to that. They can't say, well, no, that's not right. If they're starting to push back on your sources that are legit, tell them, well, what would you think is a reasonable price? This kind of puts them in a corner because they know you're right. That was a reasonable price. They're kind of stunned. Uh, why should it be that much? Maybe because my manager says so, they might come up with these kind of tricks and that just blow them off. If they're using things that aren't even objective criteria, if uh, this is a wild thing, but if they're like, well, you're dumb, you're a loser. You ever hear that in an argument? Uh, yeah, you don't take them very seriously. And at that point, you want to keep throwing out objective facts. And if they're not playing along with you, then you might just want to get up and leave and talk to someone who's more serious. So we covered a lot throughout that video and a lot of important stuff that you guys can use throughout negotiating for different things such as your salary, maybe a new car, or even a home, which are all huge purchases or potential income that you can receive. So it's important to make sure you get the best of your negotiations. Remember the key tips, and that is to one, separate the people from the problem, find the interest, not the positions, three, to find options for mutual gain for both parties. And lastly, to make sure you're using objective criteria where you're bringing up real data and facts that are hard to dispute. Using these four methods, we can often use these things to make sure that we get the best negotiation out of the situation that we're given to give ourselves the best possible outcome and reward. So let me know in the comments down below what you plan on using these negotiation techniques for. Also, let me know what you found interesting and what you learned new from this video. If you enjoyed this video, hit the like button to show me that you really like this and learned something new in this video. And as always, if you haven't already, hit the subscribe button down below to make sure that you see all videos just like this one. I come out with personal investing, finance, saving, and all other kind of tips just like that on this channel. So if you wanna make sure that you see more of those, hit that subscribe button. And I'll see you next time. As always, thanks for watching and have a good one.